Hey guys, welcome back to, wait, wait, what's the, I need to remember this stuff, so, day five, day, day five, project 15, Mark, Mark 3, 1 to 19, Jesus something, what was narrow and brief, what was the, what was the, what was the description, the crowds follow, the crowds follow Jesus, the crowds follow Jesus, the crowds follow Jesus, the crowds follow Jesus, the crowds follow Jesus. Hey guys, welcome back to day 5 of Project 15. We're going to be reading from Mark 3, 1 to 19, where the crowds follow Jesus. Pause now and read the passage. Good day, teenagers. Well, I hope you were challenged by today's reading. What you're probably noticing is in the early part of Jesus' ministry, his popularity is just growing and growing and growing. Crowds from all over the region, from all different villages, are flocking to hear Jesus, the preacher from Galilee. They're flocking to hear him, they're flocking to see his miracles. And in fact, in verse, from verse 13 to 19, we get a list of Jesus' 12 main students, his 12 main apostles. Now, What's remarkable is 11 out of the 12 of Jesus' apostles will actually witness, well, they will be eyewitnesses to not only the death, but the resurrection of Jesus. So this helps us to realize that what we're reading comes from good historical information. It comes from eyewitness testimony. But I just want to draw your attention to the very first story you read here in chapter 3. It was about Jesus healing a man who had a deformed hand. Now, he heals this man on a particular day of the week. He heals this man on the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath in Jewish law was a very important day of the week. It went from sundown on Friday afternoon to sundown on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. Now, that was their Sabbath. The Sabbath day was really important to the Jewish people. You did no work. You did zero work on the Sabbath. It was a time for rest, it was a time to study God's Word, and it was a time to build your relationship with God. So you did no work, no one went to school, nobody did anything in the farm, on the farms, you did nothing. But in the Old Testament, God commanded the people to respect the Sabbath and to focus on their relationship and building their relationship with Him on the Sabbath. That's why they couldn't work. But you notice how the crowds are feeling a little bit uncomfortable with Jesus healing this man on the Sabbath because they think to themselves, well, by Jesus healing this man on the Sabbath, isn't Jesus technically working? But what Jesus says to them is that the Sabbath is made for people, for men and women to do good things. The Sabbath was a day set aside by God. It was God's authority which declared the Sabbath and made it a holy day. And what Jesus is doing by healing this man on the Sabbath is he's not only doing a good thing and a nice thing for this man, but he's showing the crowd that he has authority to work even on the Sabbath. So what does this tell us? Well, if the Sabbath was a day which God on his own authority declared was holy, Jesus is now showing to the world around him that he is God. He is the creator of the Sabbath. He is the one whose authority made the Sabbath holy in the first place. So I want you to take that away today, that this story here is another example of Jesus claiming to be God, Jesus claiming to be divine. That's a big point, right? You and I, we worship the God of the universe. Jesus isn't just a teacher. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a great miracle worker. No, Jesus is God himself. Allow that to sit with you, and why don't you go now into seven minutes of prayer, and we'll see you next time on Project 15.